I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, I know, I know these words are strong enough to change your life. You see, what changes us when the word of God comes is how we receive the attitude with which we receive the word. And because the word itself carries the power to transform our minds. So the first place you begin to notice changes in your life is the changing of your mind. When knowledge is coming to you. So when your heart is so strong, like, I beg, I beg, I beg, I don't understand what you're saying. Please, please, please leave this matter. You will not be transformed. Sometimes I tell people this. I say, even if you don't believe something, let it stir you up to go study again. See that now? That's the attitude. Even if you know, you're know you listening to somebody and say, ah, I don't believe what this person is saying. Let that, remember yesterday I talked to you about encounters. Let that be a reason for you to go and reaffirm what you believe. Go back to study. Now that going back to study is paradventure what the person is saying is true. The Holy Spirit will now use that opportunity to open you up to truth. And if the person is not speaking the truth, the same Holy Spirit will reconfirm to you what truth is in your heart. So that's the attitude you do when you hear things that you have not, you, you're not used to or you've not heard before. Remember, the Bible says there are many voices and every voice has its meaning. Every voice carries a significance. See that now? So when you hear a voice, pause. Pause. Lest you, uh, you, you find yourself in a situation where you ignore truth. This would help you. Praise God. So before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Let's release our faith together. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming from you and I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Say this with me. My needs are met today. Praise God. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. All right. Now we were looking at John chapter 3 and verse 16 yesterday. Jesus speaking here. And he says we're talking about eternal life. The very life that God have given to us. Praise God. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I told you yesterday, everlasting life is the same thing as eternal life. Now, eternal life is the quality of life that God has. The very life that God lives. So when God said in the Garden of Eden, when he was creating man, he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. He meant with the same force and essence by which we are formed. See, so God intended that man should have eternal life. That was the intention of God. It's still the intention of God. But understand that Adam did not receive eternal life when they were created in the garden. It's clear in scriptures. The Bible says God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. There's a reason. See, sometimes be careful. Do you know, just ask, why did he use this term? Why did he say Adam became a living spirit? He said Adam became a living soul. A living soul is not the same as a spirit being. Take note of this truth. A living soul is not the same as a living spirit. They are not the same. And there's a reason God declared, the, the scriptures declare that Adam became a living soul. God is not a living soul. God is a spirit. See? Now, God himself, I think we should look at this because sometimes I, I have to recognize that I'm not talking to people who are used to the Bible. So in cases like that, it's important I show you where these things are written. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. And Genesis Genesis chapter 6 I want you to look at God's own confession about man here Genesis chapter 6 now this was when men began to multiply they began to do evil and all sort of things now God said verse 3 Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3 and the Lord said my spirit take note of that my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh and this was God's confession about man God said man is flesh hold on I thought you said you are making man in your image and after your likeness are you flesh no so did you lie when you made Adam you said you make him in your image and after your likeness no remember understand the speech of God he said let us make man in our image and after our likeness then he formed Adam that's not the perfection of man Adam was not the perfection of man see that Adam wasn't he was still a work in progress he had not attained the place that God ordained that he should attain yet and then they disobeyed God a simple logic there was a there were two trees in the garden that God says don't eat it yet you know the story they ate one of it they were driven from the garden so now this was all after that happened now people think that after they ate the fruit they became humans no <laughs> they were never eternal never never so the tree did not degrade them because if you have eternal life you can never lose it yes you can never lose it and that's why it's so precious to god that he i told you yesterday that's that's the challenge with the devil that we all have including god yes praise god thank you holy spirit so now then it says my spirit will not always strive with man for that he also is flesh so god declared here that man is flesh i know you've heard all these teachings you know man is a spirit he has a soul and lives in a body no sir no that's not true man is a living soul simple man is a living soul cased in a body that is who man is what about the spirit that happened when you got born again when you got born again was the time man became a spirit all right follow me so he says god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have now the word when he says but have he is actually saying but receive eternal life so eternal life is received and listen to me eternal life is not automatic you need to understand this it is not automatic it is giving now i told you that's the ministry of jesus let me show you something in john chapter 5 john chapter 5 verse 21 john chapter 5 and verse 21 now this is the confession of jesus in his teaching he says for john chapter 5 verse 21 says for as the father raises raised up the dead and quickened them even so the son quickened whom he wills whom he wills you remember jesus was teaching one time and he says now let me now i think that's same john chapter 5 verse 25 he says jesus speaking he says thank you lord jesus okay let me let me let me read from 20 all right let, let's let's continue from this 21 22 now for the father judged no man 
but had committed all judgment unto the Son. Take note of this statement. The Father has committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men, not some men, that all should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. What a statement <laughs> is God. What a statement. Jesus is saying here, now this is more in, in, in Jew, the Jewish mind, this is even more blasphemous than saying that you are the Son of God. Look, look, look at this. Now you saw why the Jews had issues with Jesus. Now you saw why the Jews had issues with Jesus. They just couldn't take some of the things he said. He says that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. Ah, even. Ah, ah, you, being a man, makes yourself equal with God, you see? Now, that's, that's what they were referring to. See that now? But he said it, and he meant it, and that was the Father's will. Why? Watch this. Verily, Verily I say, verse 24 now, Verily, verily I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Ooh. He who does what? Hears my words. Remember, Jesus said in John 3, 16, Anyone who believes in the Son should not perish, but have eternal life. Now he comes here and says, now this is the practical, this is how it works. Anyone who hears my word and believes on him who sent me. You see, what was Jesus saying? If you hear my word, now listen, listen. Take Jesus out of the equation. I'm sorry to tell you this. There is no eternal life. You cannot receive eternal life. No, you cannot receive it. Even God cannot give you eternal life apart from Jesus. Because he had ordained it. Understand it. He had ordained it so that this one, Jesus, will be the his ministry that is his ministry his ministry was not to come and die the coming to die was an addition so that he would fulfill his ministry because he had to die to purchase man back so that he can carry out his ministry of giving them eternal life that's why see when when, when you understand this you realize that jesus have been there. He has been there. John tells us in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Praise God. Now watch this. Let's continue. And I pray the Lord will give you understanding as we go on because I'm touching on different things. I'm trying to keep a straight line so that we'll take it precept upon precept. Verily I say unto you, the hour Verse 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Did you see that? The dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And the ones who hear I see not every dead will hear. The ones who hear will live. Why will they live? Take notes. Yeah. For as the Father had life in himself, so as he given to the Son to have life in himself. So he is telling us the Son has eternal life. Just as the Father has eternal life. Okay. And had given him authority. Take notes. 
and have given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. Mm. <laughs> All that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And what will happen? And shall comfort they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. What's Jesus saying? A day is going to come. He is going to call everybody back. Now, this is telling you how much a custodian of life that Jesus is. He, he, he is the custodian of life. Mm. Can, you, can you picture this? This man is saying, a time is going to come when everyone in the grave. Now that's to tell you in the first place, they were not supposed to go down the grave. You see, they were not supposed to go down the grave. So Jesus is telling you, and you have to believe this. That listen, I control life so much. Now that's actually what Jesus is saying. The point of this statement was not about people in the grave. The point of this statement to, is to tell you how much the Father has committed into his hands. Because he said, as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to, has life, to have life in himself. Now he's going further to tell you how much he carries this life. So he says, listen, a time is coming when those in the grave will hear my voice and they will all come out. So what raises... It is actually going through my mind right now. What raises men from the dead? It's not any power like we try to exercise power. It's the voice of Jesus that they hear. And let me tell you this truth. The one is not limited to hearing the voice of Jesus only here on earth. Even those in the grave will hear it. And when they hear, they respond to it. Ah, yadabaya kataya. You know, you look at this and you begin to think we should be raising the dead more than we do. Yes. Yes. It's not a display of power. Number one is we were not created in the first place to die. So anyone that dies is in error. Understand me. I'll repeat that again. We were not created to die. So anyone that dies, dies in error. So what about, you know, sometimes you want to think, what about all the great preachers, all the great men? Let me tell you this. When it comes to believing in Jesus, there is no greatness in it. There is no greatness in it. A man can be so great, believes everything, but doesn't believe the most important thing. He doesn't believe it. Believing is not, oh, I'm saying it. No, he doesn't, he doesn't see it. Jesus himself said, except you are converted and be like a little child. So in the things of Jesus, you've got to open your heart freely and, and, and just receive his word. Think about it. People who have been dead for many years. And, and this actually happened in the resurrection of Jesus. I hope you know that. The first batch of people rose from the dead. When Jesus rose from the dead. What do you think happened then? They heard his sound. But then there is coming again. The one that both the good and the bad will hear his voice. And I, I, you know, I can just picture the, the, those who believe in him. 
Jesus said it. You know, you remember he was talking to Martha. Oh, there's no time for that because my time is up. I'm going to share that with you tomorrow. Praise God. How Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And I'll draw out some things from that experience so you will understand what we're talking about. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, listen. Do you believe in Jesus? There are benefits to believing in Jesus. If you truly believe, it's time to rise up and live like one who believes in Jesus. Not, not one who's beggarly and, and wandering. You know, we, we are soldiers of Jesus. No, come on, come on. If you believe in Jesus, there are benefits and the time is up. Praise God. I pray that your heart is enlarged to receive what God is bringing to you. When the Lord says this is the season for the manifestation of eternal life, believe him. It will come by words. And I pray your heart is open to receive every word he's given to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful day today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.